हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू सेंट पेपर एकेडमी फॉर सिविल सर्विसेज आरंभ हो गई से हमार ऑलरेडी काउंट डाउन एपीएससी प्रीलिम्स 2023 व्हिच इज गोइंग टू बी हेल्ड इन द ईयर 2024 कुटरो मार्च वट प्रीलिमिनरी एग्जामिनेशन होबो प्रोबेबल जोंकेता एमसीक्यूज आमी ऑलरेडी दिए आइस आपनर लोगर आगत आरो आमी जोंतु एमसीक्यू टेस्ट सिरीज चलाय आसु तारे जों आजि फर्स्ट कंबाइन टेस्ट जोंतु होइकल तार 50 एमसीक्यूज तार रिपोर्ट आमी दिसिलु आरो किखिनि एनालाइसिस तो आजि आमी लय आइसु सो समय बेसी नाय गतिके आमी इमान देरी नकरि आरंभ करू सो आजि जितु फर्स्ट क्वेशन आसे इफ यू सी व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग वाज और वेयर द ऑब्जेक्टिव्स ऑफ डॉक्ट्रिन ऑफ लेफ्ट सो डॉक्ट्रिन ऑफ लेफ्ट्स और ऑब्जेक्टिव्स व्हिच से टू डिस्क्लेम एनी इंटेंशन टू एनेक्स द Indian states to place the Indian administration under the British crown, or to claim annexation of Indian states if an Indian ruler died without a male heir. So, apna loke doctrines of doctrine of lapse, subsidiary alliance, or apna permanent settlement. So, e bilag topic bhalke pohi bo not only for preliminary examination but for mains examination also. So here, if you see the answer three is correct here. So Lord Dalhousie was the Governor General of uh, Bengal from uh, Governor General from from uh, 1848 to uh, 1856. Aro uh, a doctrine of lapse to turn not a came into the force. Uh, according to the doctrine, if an Indian ruler died without a male heir, then his kingdom would lapse, which means it would become a part of the territory of the British Company. So it is a discriminatory uh, system. Next. अमी गुस्से से हम which of the following statements is correct in reference to subsidiary alliance of Lord Wellesley? So Lord Wellesley subsidiary alliance or कुंडु या क्या कुंडवा से Indian rulers were be uh, to be protected by the East India Company without any payment. Uh, the territory of Indian rulers was not taken away in any case. The Indian ruler could employ an, uh, employ any European in his service without private consultation with the company. Aru D D say Indian rulers were not allowed to have their independent armed forces, which is considered to be the right answer. So Lord Wellesley, who served as the Governor General of India from uh, 98 to 1805, 1798 to 1805, subsidiary alliance system to bona sile. Aru tenor is subsidiary alliance system to mote. Indian states were forced to accept permanent stationing of British forces within its territory and uh, pay a stipend for it. The maintenance of the same, and if the Indian ruler did not pay, a portion of their uh, country was, the uh, territory was uh, taken away as punishment. Uh, then on similar grounds, uh, so example this is the Nawab of Awadh was obliged to hand over half of his territory to the company in 1801 when Richard Wellesley was the Governor General since he failed to pay the subsidiary soldiers. Okay, similar ground that uh, Hyderabad was obliged to surrender its territory. So Indian kings were also not permitted permitted to have their own armed forces under the rule of subsidiary line. So these are the uh, important uh, points. Next, in number two, Sir, which of the following is a uh, statement doesn't apply? That means not correct to the system of permanent settlement introduced by Lord Cornwallis to encourage agriculture uh, investment. Uh, to uh, nurture a loyal class of class for the company, to secure a fixed income for the company, to maintain a large standing uh, army at others' expense. So, this is what I am going to say. So, this is not a permanent settlement. It is well as the subsidiary lines. Okay, so D is not uh, into any industry. Okay, so D. Lord Cornwallis was the Governor General of Bengal when permanent settlement introduced in 1793. Aru yar jodi ata ki korsle British hope to resolve the problems which they could not solve since con conquest of Bengal. So Bengal conquest of humar para vivin na dhorna problem ani isle theyro ko dhorna ko to they tried to solve their problem. So around 1700, rural economy of Bengal had recurrent famines hoy sile and agriculture output was declining hoy sile so agriculture out kheti bati kom hoy sile decline hoy sile due to famines uh, famines so mohamari karane to bodike ki hoy sile officials were in the opinion that agriculture trade and revenue resources of the state could be developed by encouraging the encouraging the investment in agriculture are one of uh, one of the way for doing is mane ki one way of doing it to ki to secure the rights of property and permanent fixation of rates of revenue demand so he karne 
permanent settlement of the two I say. So a permanently fixed revenue demand of the state would allow companies to look forward to a regular revenue. So permanently, so the other revenue pay for all of fixed revenue that how to be imposed for the other key key of company regularly at a particular amount of revenue for company by the new open while entrepreneurs can be ensured of earning a profit from their investment. They have made uh, so British officials have hoped that this would lead to the emergence of a class of human farmers. And rich landowners who would have the capital and enterprise to carefully and individually survey. So, according to the Lord uh, Mono, the British should act as a paternal father figures and protect their rights under their charge. So, these are the facts. Next, consider the following statements about prison moments after 1857. So, after 1857, what was the nature of prison moment? Okay, so not correct for this. Kuntu correct Nasile. Pigeons emerged as the main force of agrarian uh, movements. The movements were directed against immediate enemies of the uh, pigeons. Etu Kuddo, Etu Kuddo. Colonialism was the target of this movement. So this is not correct. So uh, three is not correct. Okay. So Pigeons nature of pigeons movement after 1858. Pigeon emerged as the main force in agrarian mo uh, movements fighting directly for their own demands. Okay, the demands were centered almost wholly on economic issues. It will uh, so prefer the prior prioritized issue still, that was economic issue. The movements were directed against immediate enemies of the pigeons. That is whom foreign zimla planters asile ba indigenous zamindars asile jonne telokok extort korisile aru jonbina money lender telokok dhar disile aru telokok extort kori pele paisa ko loisile. Thik ase. The struggles were directed towards specific and limited objectives and redressal of particular grievances. Colonialism was not the target of these movements. So colonialism O2 developer target Nasile movement. So next question Nish Kamade Dhontolo is associated Kuntu movement or logo associated with Tevaga, Telangana, Eka, UP Kisan Sava movement. So answer is Tevaga movement. Okay. So the history of Janila, the Bengal provincial Kisan Sava issued an appeal in September 1946 to implement the flood, uh, flood commission's recommendation of Tevaga, that is two thirds share to the uh, Vargadars, also known as Baksasi or Adyar, instead of one half share by mass struggle. Okay, the Vargadars toiled on the lands that the uh, Jotidars rented. Uh, to organize the Vargadars, communist cadres, including many urban students, militias, travel to the countryside. So, to enforce Tevaga, the dominant slogan was Nish Khamare Dhantolo, which means Share croppers were taking pedi to their own dressing floor rather than Jodhar house uh, as before. So the Tevaga movement originated in North Bengal primarily among Rajvansis, a low caste in tribal origin. Muslims were also there in huge numbers uh, because of the league's government's SOP in the Vargitari bill, increased repression, popularization of Hindu Mahasabha's demand for a separate Bengal and uh, repeated riots in Calcutta, the movement faded quickly. So these are the facts about Tevaga movement. Next, I mean, I will uh, consider the following statements. The revolt 1857 was led by Kumar Singh in Bihar, and Nana Sahib led Nana Sahib, who led the revolt of 1857 from Kanpur, was the adopted son of uh, Peshwa Bazira. So, Kuntu statement correct. Who is it? One only, two only, both, and neither one or two. So, here one only correct. So, Nana Sahib, the adopted son of last Peshwa Bazira, two. Okay, get a key. This is Bazira. Was obvious the choice to lead the uh, insurrection year of 1857. In, uh, in Kanpur. He was denied the family title and exiled from Pune, where now he resides near Kanpur. So Nana Sahib drove the English out of Kanpur, declared himself Peswa. Aru Bahadur Shah of Emperor Isapetyo Goyno Koyle, recognized Koyle and appointed himself as his governors. So this is important. Next, why was the revolt 1857 was not supported by educated middle class? Because they thought that British will modern help Indians to uh, modernize, modern help for 
আমি চাও মডার্ন এডুকেটেড ইন্ডিয়ান্স ডিড নট সাপোর্টেড দা রিভলভ এই অপশন ইজ ট্রু এজ দে ওয়ার রিপেলড বাই দা রেভেজ অ্যাপিলস টু সুপারস্টিশনস এন্ড देयर অপজিশন টু প্রগ্রেসিভ সোশ্যাল মেজারস ওকে দা দে মিস্টেকেনলি বিলিভ দ্যাট ব্রিটিশ রুল উড হেল্প ইন্ডিয়া অ্যাকমপ্লিশ দা টাস্ক অফ মডার্নাইজেশন while the rebels led by zamindars old rulers and chieftains and other feudal elements would take their country backwards so babisile british akole modernized hoat help koribo kintu ei jun bilak extortionist asile zamindars asile chieftains bilak asile ba other money lenders and isna elements asile tenloke country bilak tolole backward loi gusi jabo ketu karone tenloke bhabile ki we will stay neutral gotike ami ei uprising tu ba ei revolt tu ami support no koru so that british can help india to modernize so question number 8 is which of the following hindu beliefs or philosophies were accepted by theosophical society of india so uh, when it was established and by whom etu mu comment box ot janabo so uh, belief in reincarnation belief in karma doctrine philosophy of samkhya 1 and 2 only 2 and 3 only 1 and 3 only 1 to 3 so correct answer is all 1 to 3 The Theosophical Society was formed in 1875 OA Delhi in New York City United States it was established a group of westerners led by madam H P Blavatsky and colonist M S Olcott who was inspired by indian ideas and cultures so headquarter adyar india le move koil in 1882 on the outskirts of madras or uh, by contemplation prayer revelation and other means the organization Uh, taught that a particular link might be developed between a person's souls and god it embraced hindu ideas in reincarnations and karma uh, reincarnation and karma and drew inspiration from upanishad and samkha philosophy as well as yoga and vedanta schools of thought so these are very important points so its goal was to uh, fight worldwide brotherhood of humanity regardless of race faith gender caste or color or uh, it fighted by uh, it tried to remove the caste discrimination elevation of outcast and the betterment of widow conditions so next we are going to the next question that is question number 9 parthana samaj or logot a kun keta bostu associate asile boli koise ba social agenda asile boli koise disapproval of caste system women education widow remarriage raising of Uh, age of marriage for both males and females so here option b it's correct gute ketai amar prarthana samajor uddeshya asile ba main agenda asile so kesab chandra sen assisted atmaram pandurang establishing the prarthana samaj in bombay in 1867 uh, brahma beliefs has previously spread throughout the maharashtra uh, mahadev gobind ranade joined the prarthana samaj in 1870 and he was responsible for most of the society's popularity and activities thik ache his effort helped patna samaj to develop uh, a pan india identity aru rg bhandarkar asile ng uh, sandarwarkar asile to more uh, to where to more patna samaj leaders patna samaj leaders ke jeno namo mona rakhibo kete bo jodi ahe who they were associated with des bhuli so although uh, monotheism was emphasized patna samaj was primarily concerned with social changes rather than religion rather than confronting hindu orthodoxy এডুকেশন এন্ড পার্সুয়েশন বিলিভ করেছিল চারিটা এজেন্ডা আসলে এই যেটা দিছে ডিসঅ্যাপ্রুভেল অফ কাস্ট সিস্টেম এডুকেশন ফর উমেন রিমেরেজ অফ উইন্ডো এন্ড ইনক্রিজিং দা মেরেজ এস ফর বোথ মেন এন্ড উমেন নেক্সট আমি গুছি গেছো রাজা রামমোহন রায় ফাউন্ডেড দা ব্রাহ্ম সমাজ হোয়াট ওয়াজ দা সিগনিফিকেন্স অফ দা ব্রাহ্ম সমাজ ইন রিফর্মিং ইন্ডিয়ান সোসাইটি বলে কে সো ইট কন্ডেম দা প্রিভেলিং হিন্দু প্রিজুদাইজ এগেনস্ট গোয়িং এব্রড it worked for a respectable status for women in society it attacked casteism uh, and untouchability and and there should be space and untouchability it had a lasting impact across india in matters of social reform 1 to 1 3 4 2 only 1 2 and 3 1 2 3 four. so here 1 2 and 3 is correct only so iman besi dekhe da color impact to nasile across india so in 1828 raja ramohan roy formed brahma samaj which was eventually uh, brahma sabha which was uh, eventually renamed as brahma samaj so it fought numerous dogmas and superstitions in the name of social progress uh, it denounced prevalent hindu anti travel bias so it, this is correct also the brahma samaj campaign for women to have higher social standing uh, it also discouraged 
Sile marriage and polygamy. He denounced Sati campaign for repeal for Puda rule. Okay. Parda rule advocated for educational opportunities and fought for widow remarriage. So these are their reformist activities. It also took an, uh, it took on anti-celibacy and casteism. So they also fought hard to uh, repeal but remove anti-celibacy and casteism, but with limited access, uh, sorry, limited success in these areas. So Brahmin Samaj's impact, on the other hand, was limited to Calcutta and at most Bengal. It did not have lasting impact. So last option is not true. So next question is: Acid rain increases the quantity of Friendly nutrients in soil, acid rain enhances the fungal disease in aquatic life and forest. The impact of acid rain is less on soils in India because Indian soils are mostly alkaline. So, Kunketa correct could say one and two only, two and three only, one and three only, are one, two and three. So, if you see the right answer, then two and three are correct only. So, one is wrong. So, acid rain. Uh, or acid deposition includes any form of precipitation with acidic components. Okay, their pH to less than 5.6, such as sulfuric and uh, nitric acid. They fall in dry and wet forms on the ground. Impact will occur. Leaching of nutrients uh, occurs when there is an exchange between hydrogen ions and nutrients like potassium, magnesium in the soil. It makes the soil infertile. Okay, so it makes the soil infertile it didn't increases the quality or uh, quantity of friendly nutrients in the soil okay it accompanied by decrease in respiration of soil organisms uh, it uh, the decomposition rate reduces when ammonia in the soil increases due to decrease in other nutrients the decrease uh, can be seen in the nitrate level of the soil okay uh, the impact of acid rain on the soils of India is less due to alkaline property as it has a good buffering ability. So this is also an important, this might be uh, taken as an MCQ. This should be as the same sentence property. Okay. Next, the question of Goisu, biochemical oxygen demand, BOD, Uparot, Kuntu, correct. So it is an uh, important water quality parameter. So BOD value is most commonly exposed, uh, expressed in milligrams of carbon dioxide present per unit amount of water. So this should be O2, oxygen. So here one only is correct. Okay. Biochemical oxy uh, oxygen demand is the amount of dissolved oxygen needed. Uh, needed that is demanded by aerobic biological organisms to break down organic material present in a given water sample at a certain uh, certain temperature over a specific period of time okay biochemical oxygen demand is an important water quality parameter because it provides an index to access the effect of ditches wastewater will have on the receiving environment higher the bod value greater the amount of organic matter or food available for oxygen consuming bacteria so this is also important the BOD value is most commonly exposed, uh, expressed in milligrams of oxygen consumed per liter of sample during five days of incubation at 20 degrees Celsius and is often used as surrogate for the degree of organic pollution of water. Aru, BOD can be used to gauge the effectiveness of wastewater treatment plants. Uh, please note all this down. Okay, so next, let me go to question number 13. Kuntu correct to say regarding radioactive waste, lower the half life, the higher rate of radiation of the waste will be. And gamma rays are the weakest and can be blocked even by a small, thin medium. So, Kuntu could do Kuntu bull up and get beside everybody. So, here only one is correct because. Gamma rays and X rays consist of a high energy waves that can travel great distances at the spread, uh, speed of light and generally have a great ability to penetrate other materials. So gamma rays are the strongest and can be blocked only through thick concrete. But yet we case bully question and even can be blocked with small thin medium bully question. So that is uh, that is wrong. Similarly, X-rays are typically used to provide static images 
of body parts and are also used in industry to find well defects so next question ami bujhte cham question number 14 first term of being water supports more diversity than stagnant water or pond water okay prairies and temperate grassland with few trees large shrubs and tall grasses uh, prairies are temperate grasslands with few trees large shrubs and tall grasses boli koise okay so desert vegetation consists of uh, bushes shrubs and occasional trees so yar bitor kun tu shuddha hoyto bisari bodise so here only one is true okay so baki duta ki ho karane bhul etu ami sam prairies are mostly devoid of trees and shrubs okay prairies are ecosystem considered part of temperate grasslands savannas and uh, shrublands biome are based on similar temperature climates moderate rainfall and a composition of grasses herbs shrubs rather than trees as dominant uh, vegetation type so that's why this is wrong aru ei jontu ase pons con pons contributed most to the biodiversity supporting considerably more species more unique species uh, and more scarce species than other water bodies types that is streams and rivers jibla moving hoy thake typically support fewer species and fewer unique species at local and regional level than pons this is because stagnant water provides a stable habitat for the species okay that's why these two options are wrong next we will go to the question number 15 lunar lake is notified as a national geo heritage monument the lunar lake has turned pink because of a type of single uh, cell bacteria called dunella selina so is it correct mm, i think one is correct only yes so the lunar lake second statement to kya bhul the lunar lake has turned pink the shift occurs in few days the scientists speculate that the color and result could be the result of microscopic life that thrives in water with high salt concentration okay the take the lake also has aru eta aru lake to dase ki ase single cell algae ase called dunella selina okay when water conditions are favorable it becomes green but under stressful conditions such as high salinity or high amounts of light the algae produce protective uh, carot carotenoids including orange and red beta carotene okay next ami gusi jam 16 number question regarding uh, oligotrophic and uh, eutrophic lake or kotha oligotrophic lakes are very low in nutrients and uh, eutrophic uh, lakes are highly nutrient rich boli koise kon tu statement khuddo kon tu bhul kodise so yate dui ta statement khuddo based on their nutrient content lakes are categorized into oligotrophic that is nutrient deficient oligo mane nutrient deficient that's why mane low nutrients uh, mesotrophic mane moderate nutrients mane majot majote ase aru eutrophic eutrophic mane highly nutrient rich okay so oligotrophic lakes are characterized by low nutrient values which limits the lake's ability to support animal life so etu mcq hisabe aibo pare in which of the following types of lake uh, ability to support animal life is the lowest consequently the water remains clear eutrophic lakes are characterized by the high nutrient values which allows microorganisms and algae to grow in large numbers which then allow animals that feed on those algae to support to be uh, sorry algae to also be supported so next i go to question number 17 about national green tribunal it is a body that has expertise in handling disputes related to the environment but the wildlife protection act is out of its purview so wildlife protection act is out of its purview will be said from green Trib national green tribunal The National Green Tribunal is not bound by the rules mentioned in Indian Evidence Act. So, which of the following statements are correct? Please question. Here, yeah, both statements are correct. So, uh, next time we issue 18 number as a signatory of Stockholm Declaration 1972 on Environment, India has enacted which of the following acts or processes based on that? Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act, Environment Protection and Environmental Impact Assessment. One only, one, two, and three, one and three, and all of the above. So answer is all of the above here. Okay. Next, the Wildlife Protection Act permits 
the hunting of wild animals under which of the following circumstances ketia permit kore if it has become dangerous to human life if it is disabled or disease beyond recovery if it becomes dangerous to standing crops if their population has increased exponentially so i don't think that four option is correct one two three must be correct so option b may be yes option b is correct so section 11 of the act permits the hunting of wild elements in some instances it states there if the wildlife warden satisfied himself that any wild element specified in schedule 11 have become dangerous to harm human life or so disabled or disease as to be beyond recovery he may be by written order stating the reasons permit any persons to hunt such animals or cause such animals to be hunted killing shall not be ordered unless the chief wildlife warden is satisfied that the animal cannot be captured tranquilized and or translocated aku section 12 e ki koise it deals with granting a permit to hunt wildlife for particular purpose okay so next ami gusi jao question number 20 pine which of the following reasons are uh, true buli khudise regarding higher biological diversity in tropical regions compared to the temperate regions so, tropical region of temperate region of region of ke kyo biological diversity beshi etu kotha hoychha the tropical environment is less seasonal and relatively more constant second higher availability of solar energy in the tropics tropical areas have undergone frequent glaciation in the past so which option is true here one and two only correct this is not true why this is not true as in the past frequent glaciations have not occurred because global warming has been occurring in the present world for more than 50 years it means frequent glaciation occur in current world not in the past so it was agot koisile buli koise etu etia no hoy so it cannot be uh, and the correct answer okay so in tropical region between equator and tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn in northern and southern hemisphere respectively uh, it is less seasonal and more constant relative uh, relativity because of every year the sun's pores position comes on the tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn in the months of june and december respectively uh, called as summer solstice and winter solstice so higher temperature are always recorded in tropics which means there is higher ability of uh, solar energy between the tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn biodiversity is always directly proportional to the temperature biodiversity is so summer solstice and winter solstice or ki hoy tu apunar jundu iyate koi dile je equator and tropic of cancer tropic of capricorn or bikoy apnaluke bhalke geography lecture or pohibo paribo aru nijo ebar pohibo longitude latitude tropic of cancer tropic of capricorn so tropic of cancer ki man country majare par hoy goise tropic of cancer আমার ইন্ডিয়ার কোনোবা কান্ট্রির মাঝে পার হয়ে গেছে নেকি এক্সেট্রা এক্সেট্রা কোয়েশন মার্ক অলসো বিন আস সো নাইন শিডিউলৰ কথা কৰিছে কনসিডাৰ দা ফলোয়িং স্টেটমেন্ট দা নাইন শিডিউল কন্টেইনস এ লিস্ট অফ সেন্ট্রাল এন্ড স্টেট লস হুইচ ক্যান নট বি চ্যালেঞ্জ ইন দা কোর্স দা শিডিউল বিকেম এ পার্ট অফ কনস্টিটিউশন ইন 1951 হোয়েন ডকুমেন্ট ওয়াজ এমেন্ডেড ফর দা ফার্স্ট টাইম নাইন শিডিউল ক্যান নট বি চ্যালেঞ্জ অন দা গ্রাউন্ডস অফ ভায়োলেশন অফ ফান্ডামেন্টাল রাইটস সো হুইচ অফ দা ফলোয়িং ইজ करेक्ट সো 1 2 3 অল আর करेक्ट সো ইট কন্টেইনস এ লিস্ট অফ সেন্ট্রাল এন্ড স্টেট লস which cannot be challenged in courts so it becomes a part of constitution in 1951 when document was amended for the first time so it was created by the new article 318 it 318 the new article create korse which along with 31a was brought in by the government to protect the laws related to the agrarian reforms and for abolishing the zamindari system while 31a extend protection of two classes of laws 318 uh, seals specific law on an expense so uh, about schedule uh, uh, 9 also uh, these facts are very interesting so next i will uh, parliamentary form of government of india are bikoy kon tu correct kurise kon bila both uh, presence of both nominal and real executives parliament sovereignty collective responsibility of minister to the parliament double membership of the minister so how many of the 
statement given statements are correct who is so here only three statements are correct parliament is not uh, means uh, sovereign here because because the british system is based on doctrine of sovereignty of parliament while parliament is not supreme in india why because it enjoys limited and restricted powers due to certain facts such as written constitution uh, federal system judicial review and fundamental right in other cases uh, nominal and real executives the president uh, is the nominal executive or prime minister is the real executive uh, co collective responsibility is the bedrock of principle of parliamentary government that is also uh, true the ministers are collectively responsible to the Lok Sabha. They act as a team and swim and sing together. The principle of collective responsibility implies that the Lok Sabha can remove the ministry also. Okay. Uh, that is council of ministers headed by prime minister from the office by uh, passing a vote of no confidence also. Again, double membership of double membership of ministers are the members, both the legislature and executive. This means that a person cannot be a minister without being a member of parliament. So these are the facts. Next question 23. A representative government of a nation, uh, constitutional government, a representative government of a nation with federal structure, a government whose head enjoys nominal powers, a government whose head enjoys real powers, a government limited uh, by the terms of constitution. So option D is correct. Okay, constitution is there to seek uh, to limit and regulate exercise of political power. Uh, constitutional government is by definition limited government. It means government is run accordance with the rules and principles that are binding on all political actors. As a result, by support the separating or dividing power, the constitutional government helps to uh, constrain its unfettered exercise. A constitutional government establishes a framework for the government to uh be both accountable and representative so next question was uh, also at the time of indian independence the universal adult suffrage was granted to all the adult citizens is it up to 21 years and abo uh, above the voting age was reduced to 18 uh, from uh, 21 years in 18 uh, 1985 by 53rd constitutional amendment act uh, though the Indian constitution is federal, it provides only uh, for a single citizenship. So, Kuntu, uh, you are correct. Could you say only two are correct here? Option B. So, only two means how many of how many of the statements are correct? Could you say Keta statement correct? Is the correct? Are uh, A to Zuntu Hoi, a constitutional amendment at Provata to So, it was uh, in 1989. By 61st Constitutional Amendment Act of 1988, uh, voting is to reduce 18 years from 21 years. Okay, so next we will go to the question number 25. Consider the following statements about rights available to the citizen of India. Right or property is available only to the citizens of India. In uh, India, a citizen by birth is only eligible to the office of, part, uh, office of the president, while in USA, both citizen by birth and uh, naturalized citizen can be eligible for the office of the president kuntu statement good to so question number position answer eta kuddha no hoy okay so right to property is a legal right not now this is not a fundamental right this is a legal right under article 300a under part uh, 12 of the indian constitution uh, uh, it was 78 1978 of 44th constitutional amendment that 1978 delete kora goisile the right to property is available to both citizens and non citizens in india it is not exclusive to citizens only. Foreign nationals of non-Indian origin resident in India uh, can acquire the immovable property in India. Uh, foreign nationals of uh, non-Indian origin resident outside India can acquire transfer immovable property in India or on lease not exceeding five years and can acquire immovable property in India by the way of inheritance from the resident. This is also certain facts. Aru, in India, both citizens by birth as well as naturalized citizens are eligible to uh, be the president of India, while in USA, only citizen by birth, not naturalized citizen is eligible for the office of the president. Okay. Next, I will go to Article 360. It contains just the procedure, not the power to amend the constitution. Are the procedure of amendment in Indian constitution is flexible as compared to US and more rigid than 
UK constitution. Okay, so which of the following are correct? Here neither one or not two is correct because uh, in Golaknath case, Supreme Court said that Article 368 only provided key uh, question 368 a procedure to amend the constitution only and not the power to amend in response to this uh, parliamentary 24th constitution amendment Act on Loya Hile. Aro Jot Junto Article 360 amended Article 360 and Amen Koile Aru power of Parliament to amend the constitution and procedure uh, therefore. So both are included now. Next question to Kyo or next option to Kyo the procedure of amendment of uh, UK constitution is flexible rather than Indian constitution. Okay. UK ke Indian constitution to flexible. Hai. It requires only 50% of the votes to pass amendment in the parliament. Indian constitution has a hybrid system. So that is uh, rigid as well as flexible. The procedure of amendment in US system is more complex and rigid rather than Indian constitution. Okay. Next, judicial review. Judicial review is an element of basic structure of Indian constitution. 40 seconds constitution amendment act was enacted by parliament to Give its itself absolute power to amend the, any part of the constitution. At Minerva Mills case, to 1980, the Supreme Court invalidated the certain provisions in 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act as it excluded judicial review. So, who, which of the following statements? How many of the statements are correct? Here, all statements are correct. Okay. So, next we are going to the question number. Consider the following statements about basic structure of Indian constitution. In I.R. Kohilo case in 2007, Supreme Court allowed judicial review of laws falling under 9 schedule. In Waman Rao case 1981, Supreme Court held that <coughs> the doctrine of basic structure would apply to constitutional amendment act enacted after April 24, 1973. So, neither one nor two not correct to that means both are correct here okay in uh, ir koelu case in 2007 supreme court a key color laws falling under the nine schedule cannot have any blanket immunity from judicial review i will clarify koelu as a judicial review is a basic feature of the constitution and cannot be uh, taken away by using nine schedule okay next woman rao kisat question 1981 of the supreme court adhered to the doctrine of basic structure and further clarified that it would apply to constitutional amendments enacted after April 24, 1973. Next, doctrine of prospective overruling. Ketia Invo Kislev Potomon, Minerva Mills case, Golaknat case, Delhi Judicial Service case, Saru India Sani case. So, this will be uh, Golaknat case. Okay. So, in Golaknat case versus uh, State of Punjab, where Chief Justice uh, Subba Rao had first invoked, uh, invoked the doctrine of prospective uh overruling imported from american judicial system so he used this doctrine to preserve the constitutional validity of constitution the 17th amendment that legality of which had been challenged under prospective overruling the supreme court lays down the parameters within which a law laid down in a case which overrules the previous judgment has to operate okay the whole purpose was uh, purpose is to avoid reopening of settled issues and also prevent uh, multiplicity of proceedings. Okay. So next time we will consider the following statement. Article 368 uh, allows the amendments of constitution by the way of addition, variation and striking down. Article 368 provides for three types of amendments. Parliament cannot amend uh, those provisions which form the basic structure of the constitution. Aru, amendments that require only simple majority are <coughs> not deemed to be amends, amendments under Article 368. So, which of the following statements are correct? So, here only two statements are correct. So, Parliament cannot amend this provision which form a basic uh, structure of uh, constitution. Article 368 allows for the amendment of the constitution by the way of addition, variation, or repeal of any provision in accordance and procedure laid down for the purpose. Striking down to Carho actually striking down. So these two are correct and above two are not correct. Striking down uh, is cannot be done by parliament. It, it is generally done by courts. 
striking down means declaring a law null and void however it may be possible that the struck down laws uh, might stay on the uh, statute books without being operational okay aru article 368 provides for two types of amendments that is by special majority of parliament or by special majority of parliament along with ratification with half of the state uh, legislature by simple majority so uh three types no hai okay so next basically 31 number question physiographic feature and location along with match kobo dise karewas kashmir valley duars uttarakhand barsans north bengal which of the following pairs are correctly match one or two two or three one and one to three so here only one is correctly match duars are alluvial foot plains flood plains in northeastern india that lies south of the outer foothill of himalaya and north of the brahmaputra river basin uh, duars means they are gateway to the northeast and bhutan and duars are found in north bengal okay so this should be here or this should be here versions are uh, primarily crescent shaped sand dunes that are likely to shift while facing the wind with intensity for from uh, one particular direction they are commonly found in sandy desert regions in rajasthan so this should be if there is an option like rajasthan then it might be correct okay so next the rivers flow through the uh, so coastal plains of india are kotha koise kon to correct kodise the rivers flow through the coastal plain from estuaries kayals also called backwaters are the distinguishing features of malabar coast which of the following statements are correct to this so both one and two are correct here the western on the basis of location and active geomorphical uh, uh, geomorphological process indian coastal plains can be divided into two the western coastal plain and eastern western coastal plains are narrow in the middle and get broader towards north south okay the rivers flowing through this coastal plain do not form any delta aru the rivers along the coast from estuaries and provide conditions ideal for fisheries but in malabar coast has got certain distinguishing feature in form of kayals that is backwaters which are used for fishing inland navigation and also due to its special attraction for tourist this would be comma okay next what type of plate boundaries led to the formation of great uh, himalayan mountains okolo jane this is continental continental and convergent so it is a type of convergent plate boundary with two continental plates collide a convergent plate boundary between the indian plate and the eurasian plate led to the formation of the great himalayan mountains so which of the following plateaus are part of peninsula plateau palmao malwa koimbatur karnataka and meghalaya part plateau all are the parts so uh, the peninsula plateau kotha koidu geologically it constitute one of the ancient land masses in earth surface uh, it was supposed to be one of the most uh, stable land blocks it is a uh, table land table land composed of old crystalline igneous and metamorphic rocks with uh, gently rising hills and wide valleys or uh, it consists of several plateaus such as hazribagh palmao ranchi malwa koimbatore karnataka plateau etc uh, this plateau of meghalaya and karbianglong is also part that is extension of main peninsula plateau so with reference to the coastal plain of rahulise ako the western coastal plain is classified into utkal coast northern uh, sarkars and koromandal the eastern coastal plain stretches uh, from gujarat to kanyakumari as konkan kanada and malabar coast so kun to correct ya bitot khudise so neither one and nor two are correct the eastern coastal plain is classified into utkal coast nadan uh, sarkar and kormandal it lies between eastern ghats and the bay of bengal and it extend from ganga delta to kanyakumari okay on other hand the western coast strip extend from gulf of kambe uh, in the north to cape kemori okay cape kemori mean kanyakumari western coastal plain stretches from gujarat to kanyakumari as yes. konkan kanada and malabar coast okay so there is a difference here this this should be western this should be eastern okay next uh, which of the following valleys are rift valleys so sun valley damodar valley or mahi valley so here correct option is all that is a rift valley is a low land region that forms where hard tectonic plates move apart or rift 
they are found on both land uh, and bottom of the ocean where they are created by the process of sea floor spreading they differ from river valleys and glacial valleys in that uh, they are created by tecton tectonic activity not the process of erosion in uh, india damodar valley tapti valley namada valley and mahi valley are the examples of reef valley okay so next 37 number question the bhabar is an ill drain damp this is marshy and thickly forested narrow tract okay uh, the underground streams are re immersed in bhabar that is a deposit, uh, deposition of huge numbers of pebbles and rock debris across the alluvial uh, fence of bhabar and a bhabar belt is well suitable for agriculture so which of the following statements are correct here only three is correct okay so it is a narrow bhabar is a narrow portion northern mon stretch of indo gangetic plain okay aru the streams disappear once they reach bhabar region because this uh, porosity in contrast they reemerge in terai region okay next aru last to kya bol it is not suitable for agriculture only big trees with large roots thrive in uh, in this belt next we consider the following will be the third option is say so which of the following is correct so we will go to the answer directly so all the options here are correct dravidian rock system is sedimentary dharwar is oldest metamorphic so if you remember two of the options then uh, you can guess the third option also in certain cases so which of the following statements regarding eastern ghats ranges are correct they are wider than western ghats they lie almost parallel to the monsoons coming from the bay of bengal and hence do not cause uh, so much of rainfall they are older than western ghats so which of the following are correct here 1 2 3 all are correct here so eastern ghats are wider than western ghats western ghats average switch to 50 for 80 km like hoy eastern ghat of 100 over 200 km hoy so eastern ghat to discontinuous ranges of mountain along eastern coast of india hoy pokolo jane to so they are eroded and cut through the four major rivers of peninsular india that is godavari mahanadi krishna and kaveri or eastern ghats are almost parallel to the monsoon coming from bay of bengal and do not cause much rain the average elevation of eastern ghats is about 600 meters above sea level the eastern ghats are older than western ghats and have complex uh, geologic history uh, related to the assembly and breakup of the ancient supercontinent of uh, rodinia and the assembly of gondwana supercontinent now so eta paragraph er kotha dise etu ki dekkan pletu hoyne central highland er kotha bujaise na silong pletu ne karnataka pletu kuntu hoy bujaise etu ko bolise they are bounded to the west by aravalli range they are classic example of relic mountains which are highly renowned and from form continuous ranges on the one side it had been covered by longitudinal sand ridges and crescent shaped sand dunes called bursins definitely it should be central highland okay so these are bounded by west by aravalli range the satpura range is formed by a series of scrap plateaus in south generally and elevation varying from 600 to 900 meter above the mean sea level this forms the northernmost boundary of deccan plateau and this is a classic example of relic mountains which are highly denuded and form classic discontinuous ranges so next we will go to the question number 41 about ancient assam kuntu kuddo question it was known as prajjotisha in mahabharat it was known as kamrupa in puranas and tantras here both options are correct here okay next we'll go to the 42 number question where it was mentioned that the kamrupa is said to be extend from karadwa river in the east e a s t this should be to dikho on the west and kamrupa is said to uh, extend from the mountain to kanjagiri on the north to the confluence of the brahmaputra and lakya rivers on the south so this should be uh, karatoya river should be at uh, west this should not be at east okay and the khori river on the east so here only two option is correct next no less than four sections of drona parvans are devoted to narrative of his heroic deeds on the field of kurukshetra from time to time, from time from the time when he rescued duryodhan from the onslaught to him to his fight with arjun in which he was defeated and slain here he refers to bhagadatta okay so bhagadatta is frequently mentioned in the mahabharata as a powerful uh, 
penetrate in ruling in the east so he is uh, frequently mentioned in mahabharat so he was uh, he was mentioned as the potentate ruling in the east powerful okay so jani lobo lage in shabha parban it is uh, related to the arjun attack his kingdom pragyotisha also so bhagaratta had host of kirats and sins and numerous other warriors that dwelt on the sea coast but after eight days of fierce fighting was defeated and compelled to pay tribute okay later on ki hol when he forces uh, of course uh, kauravas and pandavas were being mastered for their final struggle he went with a powerful army to uh, assist the duridhan and no less than four sections of dona parban are devoted to the narrative of his heroic deeds on the field of kurukshetra from the time when he rescued duridhan from the onslaught of bhim to his fight with arjun in which he was defeated and slain so these are important next a uh, says kindukula is said to have lived in the kamrup uh, during the reign of this should be dharmapal okay the shakya named dharmapal is said to came from west and founded the kingdom he made capital his capital west of guwahati and attracted a chitra a number of brahmans and other caste of hindus from upper india the says kindukula is said to have lived in this kingdom so next uh, according to the nidanpur grant which ancient kamrupa uh, uh, which ancient king of kamrupa has uh, reign was free from troubles okay kar reign to free from uh, troubles it is so this is samudra varman so credit should go to the kushya varman for having raised kamrupa to the important to a important position and thus making figure prominently in the political map of india আর ও পুষ্যমল মানেও মহাধীরাজার উপাধি লৈছিল এই কন্টেক্সট জানি থাকে সমুদ্র বর্মান সিঙ্গল কম্বেট একর্ডিং টু নিদানপুর গ্রান্ট হি ওয়াজ দা ফিফথ সমুদ্র উইথ ইজ ওশিয়ান এস ইট ওয়ের এন্ড হিজ রেইন ওয়াজ ফ্রি ফ্রম ট্রাভেলস ওকে নেক্সট এমং দ্য কিংস অফ বর্মান ডিনেস্টি অফ কামরূপা হুজ নেম ওয়াজ perhaps mentioned in the alabat pillar inscription so it will be balabarman one he is uh, like his grandfather he also assumed the imperial title of mahadhiraja maharaja dhiraja okay perhaps he was the king uh, mentioned in the alabat pillar inscription where samudra gupta whom samudra gupta vanquished okay next which among the kings of barman dynasty of kamrupa who seems to have come uh, consecrated his achievement by performance of two horse sacrifices so here it will be mahendra varman after uh, ganapati varman ruled his son uh, mahendra varman who was the repository of uh, all sacrifices by his brilliant career of conquest and glory he paved the way of uh, paved the way for greatness which kamrupa attained under baskar varman okay he seemed to have uh, consecrated his achievement by performing uh, or performance of two horse sacrifices it may be noted that he was the first among the kings of this line to celebrate horse sacrifices an act of political importance as has been suggested by some with decline of gupta empire the gupta empire declare her decline her command hikini amar kilo kamrupa junto asile it was it began to flourish under mahendra varman aru by performing two horse sacrifices he became the paramount sovereign of eastern india okay so question number 48 as confirmed by dovian nidanpur grants of bhaskar roman which king of barman dynasty of kamrupa had donated land to large number of brahmans in uh, mayura salmarga hara in sandrapuri vishya near river koshika so who was the king so here bhuti barman bhuti barman was the king so he donated a large uh, number of large land grant to the brahmanas okay this has been confirmed by both dovi and nidanpur grants of paskar barman so 49 and nidanpur grant who was referred to as the very life of dharma the abode of justice the home of virtues the treasury of supplicants and the shelter of fearful and the temple of plenty of sea so it can it should be vast government option c so nidarpur copper plate pa ki gompa copper plate pa ki gompa hai bhaskar dharman propagated the light of arya dharma by uh, dispelling the darkness of kali as by means of proper expenditure on his revenue 
so he caused the deep loyalty of his subjects uh, to be uh, heightened on account of his power of keeping order his display of modesty and cultivation of close acquaintances with him the gift to a bounteous and the matter timely application of six political expedients uh, expedients uh, he was skillful brihaspati as brihaspati himself in a, in the words of nidanpur grants he was the uh, life of dharma the abode of justice the home of virtues and the treasury of supplicants and the shelter of fearful and the temple of plenty of sri okay so question number 50 which of the following historical sources gives evidence that the 20 kings intervened between salastamba and brahmapal so nidanpur ahar maski copper plate inscription of ratnapal so here option uh, d is correct the only clue to a uh, clue as to the period when they ruled is furnished by the statement in copper plate inscription of ratnapal that 20 kings intervened between salastamba and Brahmapal. Okay, the inscription in question appears to have been prepared between 1010 to 1050 AD, and as the grants recorded, them were executed in 25th and 26th years of Ratnapal's reign. Uh, we perhaps take 1000 AD as the date when his father, the founder of the dynasty, ascended the throne. So, as the mentioned here, if you have liked our uh, videos, then please like, comment, share, and subscribe our YouTube channel. Send for academic for series. Thank you and good night.